using technology for engagement because obviously this is a fairly new practice. Um, we've got lots of tools out there and not many of us really know what to do with each. And also, every time you implement one of these tools, you go through a massive learning curve of how is this tool going to be configured to actually meet our needs um, and what, what needs does it actually meet. So that's what I'll talk about today. Obviously, the government does a lot of engagement already. Uh, a lot of that's face to face. It's been happening since the day of dawn. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the times we do engagement, we're not actually thinking about the information that we're gathering and how we're going to build that into government as a resource. Something that we can analyse and understand for policy development if we're doing community consultation and also something that we can draw on and build upon long term, potentially to understand communities and their needs more effectively. Obviously, it's also really critical if we're going to understand the effectiveness of our service delivery and our programs. <laughs> I love this image. <laughs> I thought it might resonate with the Gov Camp, or uh, well, Bar Camp, I should say, community. Um, <laughs> um, I love it because this is actually the way community are already self organising using social media. So, in this instance, they were actually supportive of government and they were trying to encourage people within their community to participate within government processes. And that's from British Columbia, where I worked for a couple of years. And amazingly, over there, through the community engagement that they've been able to do, they're actually harnessing and utilising community networks to promote opportunities to engage and also encourage people to come both to face-to-face -face forums for community engagement but also online forums for community engagement. So they've got a really high rate of participation and quite a sophisticated dialogue. As I said, there's heaps of technologies out there on the market now to engage. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of a mess because there's information being gathered and shared in so many different locations so on here I've got social media. I've also got represented a whole range of online engagement platforms. And there's you know, platforms that allow you to do crowdsourcing, encourage discussion like forums. Um, there's also so many survey tools out there being used by government at the moment. Um, a lot of these are happening independent to our website CMS. And then we're using things like marketing tools to promote engagement opportunities. And all of those things contain personal data about people and are being shared across applications, web applications, phone and mobile apps and devices, and also a lot of products. And some of these are proprietary and some of these are open source. When we use all of those tools, we basically create a headache for the policy staff and communication staff who have to then collate the information and analyse it to feed it back to the ministers and the mayors and the policy teams to inform them about what, they, what the community want and how they should address those issues. So really what we're doing is we're creating so many fantastic ways to engage, but we're not enabling government to actually listen very well. Um, we're also creating an information management headache because we've got data stored in so many different locations and we have a privacy issue. And it really is an issue. Um, I was commissioned, as I said, to do some study across um, agencies in New South Wales. I've also done the same kind of work with a lot of peers across the world. This is a huge issue around the world. It's a difficult one to acknowledge and recognise because it creates work. Um, but um, there is actually some answers and I'm delivering a similar presentation to state agencies um, later this year and sharing this information openly in the hope that we can actually just improve the practice. This is not just about critique. So today I'll share with you a few of the ideas that I'll share and how to address that. The first one is really define your purpose. So I've developed, um, with the support of a lot of peers around the world, what's called the Engage Tech Spectrum. And basically it takes the IAP2, does everyone know the IAP2? Uh, International Association for Public Participation. They have what's been typically used in our industry around the world, a spectrum for different levels of engagement. So it might be, you might be engaging to inform, you might be engaging to consult, which means collecting feedback, you might be engaging to involve and possibly work collaboratively with your stakeholders. So I've been looking at the tools that are out there and I've been saying, where do they fit in on this spectrum, this inform, consult, involve, collaborate spectrum? And what do we need to consider fundamentally within government when we're selecting our tools? And for me, that fundamentals are online experience, information management, and also management of relationships generated. And when I say that, I mean privacy and personal data, but I also mean en 
enabling the sharing of information across your organisation so you can actually leverage and harness the investment that you're making into building a relationship with your stakeholders. And you may do that across your organisation and you may do that across government. For me, I, I'd love to see a lot more coordination and collaboration in the way that we reach out to our stakeholders because that respects their time. It respects their time and the input that they're providing to government. I mean, government will always have the authority and may or may not use that information, but at least it enables a more sophisticated dialogue. So this is about understanding where the different tools fit within that spectrum. Unfortunately, um, most people who think about engagement are just thinking about community consultation. So they're looking at technology as something that meets a short-term need, like a six-week consultation period. So they go and purchase a new technology and they implement a new tool and they go through that learning curve that I was just talking about, but they don't really understand the capabilities of the system. They're making ad hoc purchasing decisions and they're also creating these information headaches and not managing the community and stakeholders' expectations about how that information will be used and also how that forum to engage with that community, those, those platforms, those avenues into government will be utilised in future. There's, there's, there needs to be a little bit more coordination across agencies. Um, and if that happens, what we're going to see is reduced expenditure. A absolutely, there is no doubt about that, particularly if we, start, if we think about these fundamentals on the bottom here. If we actually create a baseline in government, to enable information that's collected through all of these different avenues, we will actually create um, a way of government, enabling government to be able to harness and listen more effectively to those communities, prioritise engagement activities more effectively when they go out and they want to engage with their stakeholders, and also have information already within their understanding about what those communities actually want to discuss and what, those, what the issues already are in those communities so they can be more proactive about addressing them. And that, the key to this is not just about how we manage the information from, those, from all of the engagement <coughs> techniques online, it's how do we manage the information gathered through all of the engagement techniques overall. So that's why I'm really focusing on the base. Do you remember the spectrum? The base of the spectrum. The, the information management piece. So when we create that baseline, we need to create a baseline that allows us to bring in information from all of our engagement methods. And funnily enough, the, the world of engagement is now becoming very married up with customer service because <laughs> we've started to create some really good tools to manage information and contact with the community in that way. But what we're also doing, um, so that's, you know, we've got our correspondence systems, we've got our email systems, uh, then we might even have a submission system. Some organisations have this. But then we're going out on social media and online engagement tools and, and events, and we're not, we, we need to, as I said, create a method to enable policy people to be able to bring all that data into the one place. And that's to solve the consultation issue, but it also is to create that deposit of information long term that's going to enable those sophisticated conversations. So engagement, you know, is a social science. We need to start thinking about it as a social science and we need to start thinking about our technologies when we select them, about how they're going to integrate and become a bit more inoperable. Interoperable, sorry. I'm not an IT person. <laughs> um, people often talk about online engagement and they critique technology for engagement because it doesn't reach out to the other people who don't, aren't digital natives and you know, don't actually go out and use technology for engagement. There's actually a lot of tools that are available for digital engagement that you can do face to face. Online, you know, people think about technology for engagement as just online engagement. That's not the case. I've been using some fantastic tools on iPads, for example, that allow me to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one interview or have a group-based discussion that actually allow me to work through information, ask a series of questions and collect data. The good thing about some of those tools is that they actually can be used offline. You know, we've, got, we've had the argument of, well, what about the regional communities where we don't have Wi-Fi access? If we can embed processes like that and tools like that that allow us to collect the information at the source and then bring it automatically 
back into these kinds of tools for analysis. You know, it is doable. There are tools out there. So if we can do that, we're enabling that more sophisticated conversation. We're actually engaging face to face. We're reaching people where they want to be engaged, be that online or offline, and we're digitising the data so it becomes a central deposit of information that we can generate insights from and then utilise longer term. There is privacy issues, and I've, I have mentioned that already, but it's worth, it's worth mentioning. <laughs> um, so the key is integrating these tools into your strategy to think about your purpose for engagement <coughs> before you select your tool. And also to think, as I said, about these fundamentals. When I talk about purpose for engagement, I guess you're probably wondering what my IT solution is. If we've got this foundation, these are, these are sort of the recommendations I've been given. If we've got this foundation in place, then we can actually enable creativity up here. And we can also encourage the people who are out there on the market who are selling these kinds of tools to speak a bit more of a common language about the purpose that they're going to solve, to sell in ways that serve those short-term needs, but also make sure that any data they generate through their processes is actually compatible with these systems. And if it doesn't have an, as I said, I'm not techie, I'm not IT, if it doesn't have an API, then at least have an export-import functionality that streamline, streamlines the process for data management. So the idea there, I mean, if, from a procurement perspective, would potentially be to establish those longer term solutions underneath, the interoperability of those systems, and then encourage possibly through an open panel, open panel sort of um, platform and service, the proprietary companies, even the developers out there who are doing innovative things, to actually develop tools that enable this data to be shared, at least some compatibility. The other issue, and I think the, I, the IA people in the room here might like this one, is some standardisation and classification. If we are going to get to a point where we share data across an agency or across government and we, we want to utilise that data in future engagements, I highly recommend thinking about your taxonomy and the way you're classifying your data for analysis and reporting. So it is doable. <laughs> I know it sounds like a little bit of a problem. Um, we can still be creative in the way that we do engagement. We can still be responsive and innovative in the tools that we select. We just need to be a bit more strategic. Fundamentally, I've said data interoperability, you know, digital engagement, not just online. Um, think about all, your, all of your different systems, but also think about your online methods to engage. If you're using online engagement tools, include social media in that. Because what happens is, you, do you remember my, my slide early on where I had all of the different technologies that we're using to engage and they're separated from your website and they're separated from your social media strategy? We've got to get more coordinated even in our, the way we engage online and move people through the engagement process. So that means things like embedding those tools within social media and if you create a social media like a, web, a Facebook page and that's going to be your tool to engage long term, but you're going to have a consultation, embed your consultation tool into your Facebook tool because you can retain your level of engagement as long as people can still like you and participate and remain engaged through that channel, but make sure you've got a tool to collect the data embedded into that platform. So it's actually about integrating your online techniques and integrating your offline techniques, but having that baseline as I mentioned. Um, Lastly, and this is kind of the dream, is this is about improvement. This is about policy. This lady, Gail Fairland, who I worked with on this, is in South Australia, and she's working with the Department of Career and Cabinet there. So this is a, the, the typical policy cycle. This is about understanding where the different tools fit into that process. So it's not just about, once you've developed a solution, consulting the community. It's actually about utilising a variety of tools that service a variety of purposes but actually having a common method underneath so you understand what tool you're using for what purpose and you're actually retaining the value that you're investing into the purchase of those products, the activities, the investment into the activities and the investment of the community members and also the data that you've collected. So it's actually building upon that and improving not just policy but also programs and services as we're delivering them. 
Um, I mentioned I ran some events. The events are called Engage Tech. There's a hash, the hashtag Engage Tech. If you search that, you can see the stream um, that came out of that event. It was, they went really, really well. And I'm working on some reports which will summarise what we got out of it, including case studies from all of the agencies that are using different tools. Um, if you want to get in touch, give me a call. I'm on Twitter, eMotivate. Thanks. Thank you so much.